check one two one two. We live, baby. Come, come, come on. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy Big Chew, the voice of the beat. You know what I won't blaze up. Come on, blaze up. It's a beat for me. Wah 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 wah
I'm I'm real this close on the heels. I'm a, I'm gonna be honest, you guys. I'm I'm pretty positive if history repeats itself and nothing is new under the sun. I'm gonna lean on the side that brother Dr. Uma is a plant. He's taking on the ideals of people who are known agents, okay? But we'll get there, okay? We'll get there, we'll get there, we will get there, okay? Shout out to everybody in the building. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Let's get into this uh, knowledge. Now, listen, first and foremost, nothing that I'm bringing to you guys, I, I, make, I didn't make none of this up. I didn't create it. I've seen it. I've read on it. I've done other uh, research on it. I'm I'm looking at other people and other doctrine and all, all this other stuff. And then I'm coming to bring it to you guys because some of you guys may not know, you know, and I'm starting to see that with this audience that I have over here, a lot of things we might, you know, we don't know. So I'm bringing it to you guys. There are people who are way better well-researched than me. Shout out to the brother Dane Calloway. Shout out to Top Cat. Shout out to, um, to UBTV. Oh my God. I, I love, I felt whoever told me about his channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Shout out to all these brothers and sisters who really put in the work more than I can, because I have a channel that has a whole bunch of stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I just wanted to see if I can do my part and bring it to this audience, to you guys and try to get you guys a different perspective. Now, this is why I told you question everything. Remember I told you question everything. Because Dr. Umar said science does not back that people were indigenous to this land, right? But look at the hypocrisy of it all, you guys. Science doesn't back that people were originally indigenous to this land. They say we all came from a monkey in Africa. But then it also talks about how the melanated people are the people of the land. If the melanated people are the people of the land, then how is it that we, we were stuck in one little area? And that's where I was going. And then with the Marcus Garvey thing, it sent me on the whirlwind because I'm like, wait a minute. How he coming away from Jamaica telling us to go back to Africa? And shout out to the ancestors who be like, oh, no. You know what I mean? Hell no. We ain't going no goddamn well. You know, yes, they're trying to say uh, clear people are a stem off of Negroes. There are many theories about, about where clear people come from. Honestly, to be completely honest, I have no idea where they come from. I don't know if I, I don't know if somebody say a science project. That sound about right. I don't know where the clear people come from. They don't know where they come from. They'll say Europe because that's what science and social studies and sociology and all that stuff say. But at the end of the day, they're not a, a, a really old species. OK, so it got me that my wheels are turning because I'm like, why is Marcus Garvey coming from Jamaica telling all of the Negroes in America to go back to Africa? He had a movement called the Back to Africa movement. And as my wheels got to turning and I started doing so much, so much, so much, so much and researching and reading and reading and researching. And I'm realizing Marcus Garvey and I'm, I'm for the for the. All intents and purposes of this video, Marcus Garvey was an agent. Just like I proved to y'all Martin Luther the King, a.k.a. Mike Mike was as well. All your leaders are in bed with the clears. That is why they are able to do what they do. That is why the, the whole system works the way it works, because our leaders are not to be trusted. And that's the kind of perspective that I want to come from. Now, as far as the like research and all that stuff, I, I'm, I got some stuff in here. I'm going to show y'all some stuff. But if you want to dive deep into some research, I can point you to some channels, UBTV, Dane Calloway, uh, a, a whole bunch of people I could point y'all to, to go get the in-depth research. My channel is like a, a low-key Black History Exposed channel. And it's not to expose to embarrass. It's exposed to enlighten. Okay. So let's do this. Um, let's uh, put our thinking caps on. I hope you guys got out and got in the sun today. I hope that, um, you know, y'all had a good time and, and y'all was able to get into open your minds. Please be respectful in the chat, you guys. Um, uh, uh, yes, they are the talented 10%. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'll, but we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, please be respectful to everybody in the chat. Um, and, and just open your mind. Even if you don't believe me, I always invite, advise everybody.
please go away from what I'm saying and then do your own research, okay? Let's get into it. So, Marcus, 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 who is this fool? Who is that? Who are we talking to? Girl, let me get you off of here. You a distraction already, girl. You know what? Let me put it on, um, let me put it on, um, um, subscriber mode. That'll do. That'll do. I'm tripping. I could just put it on subscriber mode. Hold on. I forgot. It's Educational Friday. We have to do that. I forgot. My bad, y'all. Let's get on um, Educational Friday. Wait, let me add this word to this, too, before we get started. So nobody else won't get in, you know. Let me see. Is that adding it? All right. Hold on. Let me put it on uh, at subscriber mode. Uh, let's do that. All right, it should be on subscriber mode. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. All right, cool, 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 cool beans. Let's get into it, you guys. We don't need no more distractions. Um, she did a Marcus video, Miss T's hot mess. His channel is good too. She did a Marcus video too. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll check her out. I use uh the edge control that I use is she bomb. You guys, really quick, let me turn this AC off. I mean, on, girl. I'm hot. Hold on. These lights be killing me. Hold on. All right, I'm back. I use the edge control um, called She Bomb. She Bomb. B-O-M-B. Yes, so I'm back. So let's get into it. Remember I told you guys, everybody... Most of the people that are in our so-called civil rights, civil rights leadership, all most of the people, um, you know, that we see as a regard as our heroes in the past. I told y'all this morning, most of them are either um, transplants, meaning they're not Americans, African Americans, for lack of better terms, or they are of a mixture. They are half and half, squadron, woot the woot the woot. Okay, so with that being said, it made me dive into Marcus Garvey, and Marcus Garvey is gonna fall into the the uh, the aisle of the transplant. Now, Marcus Garvey is is a Jamaican, um, uh, a, a black Jamaican is what he is. He is not it from America. He's on. He's never even hardly, from what I understand, he's hardly spent any time. Maybe a couple of times that he's traveling out, you know, through ports and stuff. Uh, he's he spent very little time in the South. Uh, yet his message was for the people of America to carry as, you know, from over here. And, and this is how they posit it, you guys. What they say is, well, Marcus Garvey felt like, well, look, instead of trying to fight for rights over here, instead of trying to go against these clear people, let's just go to Africa and have our own thing. And then we ain't got to worry about it. It sounds great in theory, but you don't understand the underlining and the covert message that's in there. The covert message in that is leave your land that you own because see, they don't tell y'all this. We owned land here. We own land. And if you just say up and leave everything that you have and go over to a foreign country because it was then and it still is now, you you got to understand that that is more harmful than helpful, okay? It was it's so much more harmful than helpful because if you're going to tell me that, you know what, these clears done, done, done got into it with y'all, Y'all ain't going to win, girl. Let's just leave. You want me to, I, I, for instance, I own a home. You want me to leave my house because me and the neighbors keep getting into it? No, ma'am. No, that, that that don't go like that. See, what, how it goes is because that's my home and I pay for it and it's mine, I'm going to stay and fight. And that's what our ancestors did. Shout out to the ancestors. I want to show you guys something. So in some of the research I was doing, uh, I found, let me go get it. Hold on. In some of the research I was doing, no, not that one. I would, I found a, um, before we get into his connections, Marcus Garvey, but I found a study that was talking about how much land black people lost in this whole shiz naive. You know what I'm saying? Because black people lost millions of dollars 
You know what I mean? Of land. Okay. Let me get uh, five, five, hit and play. Uh, I got so much stuff I've been doing, girl. Y'all had me working overtime, girl. Head hurting and everything. Okay. Give me one second. If I don't have it here, did I download it really quickly? Y'all give me one second. I want to pull this up for you guys to see how much land black people lost. Because this is extremely imperative to what we're talking about. And like I said, even if you want to go with the move of, okay, cool. We, um, we, 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 at some point we were in, oh no, that's the eugenics joint. No, that's not that. At some point we were in, um, Africa. Let's go with that. But my, I, I posit the question to you is, even if we were originally, or even if that was our actual origin, when, at what point do we hold claim to a place that we literally cultivated and been in for thousands of years prior to the colonizers coming? You see what I'm saying? We don't just say, oh, because you are So for instance, I'm from New Orleans, born and raised, but I live in Georgia. So you, I, I understand that I'm a Louisiana I was born in Louisiana, but my residence here is in Georgia. I'm not going to leave my residence in Georgia to go back to Louisiana because me and the neighbor keep getting into it. No, no, ma'am. So let me go pull this up. I could just re-pull it up because I don't know. I, I thought I sent it to myself. Um, let's go get it. The number is asinine. It's asinine. And, and let me also say this, you guys. Please, let me also say this as, as well. The reason, another reason I think that Dr. Umar may be one of those guys uh, who's an agent, and, and I'm going to lay this out as my own, um, my hypothesis. The reason I believe that Dr. Umar is, must be, be an agent, he's always promoting Africa. He's always promoting everything except, you know what I mean? Us progressing here just like marcus garvey let's get into it i found the article so look peep this y'all so when you look at a total and this is a, a ballpark figure this isn't even for show okay so when you look at a total of u.s land loss right it says U.S. black farmers lost over $326 billion worth of land in 20th century study. 20th century is the 1900s. This is when they started really getting us off of our land, okay? Mind you, in the early 1900s, you got Garvey Holland about back to Africa movement. You have W.E.B. Du Bois as uh, half clear, whatever he was as, over there telling us, well, look, black people, look, this is what we could do. Instead of going back to Africa, that's crazy. We don't have to go back to Africa. Let's just stay second and third class citizens and stay here. And in hopes that maybe one day the clears will see that we good people. And then we could go ahead and, you know, get some rights. That was your options back then. Either carry your ass to Africa with, with Garvey. Thank God the majority of us didn't. Or stay your ass here with Garvey. I mean, with, uh, with, the, with the boys, which most of us did, in hopes that things will change. It just don't work like that. But let's get into it really quickly. All right, it says, Black farmers in the United States lost roughly $326 billion worth of acreage during the 20th century, uh, according to the first study to quantify the present day value at the law of that loss. So that's what it will be worked today. Land loss is a contributor to racial wealth gap in the United States as and an issue that has marred the relationship between the United States Department of Agriculture or USDA and minority farmers. Remember, I keep telling y'all, remember, I keep telling y'all, I keep telling y'all, I say, look, we have to, we have to get reparations back in land. The resources are reparations. It's not in no doggone, uh, no money. See, we even even Martin Luther King said this. Hold on, let me ban this user as well. All right, who did I ban just now? Yeah, that was the right one. All right, um, so we have to we have to be we have to be vigilant about what we want. Let's go get Martin Luther King and what he said because this is very important. And I'm gonna stop um paying so much attention to that, but it's, I just, I can't help it, y'all. I read the comments. Let's go get what Martin Luther King said. 
They built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, today many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And this is what we are faced with. And this is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington in this campaign, we are coming to get our check. So important. Martin Luther King, although they don't publicize that, that speech, but Martin Luther King was literally talking about how a lot of land was taken from us. I don't know if you guys remember this. I told y'all about John Lewis, how his parents said, go, oh my God, please don't go down there messing with this Martin Luther King person. We're going to lose our land. Remember that? Please don't go down there. We're going to lose our land. The people kept saying that. The, the parents kept, because they understood that, you know, hey, if you you go down there trying to be first class citizen and shit, we're going to lose everything. But as children do, hard headed, you know what I mean? There it is. And now we got people like Tariq Nasheed, who's leading the charge, um, who's leading the charge of, oh, let's go get our reparations. We're going to go march down to Washington and get reparations, knowing good and damn well, them people not about to cut us no check for no money. Because they understand where the reparations lie. First of all, they understand that the story they told us about the way in which slavery happened, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but the way in which it happened, it didn't happen. So therefore, they're not going to give us no money for that because it's a fake story. It's almost like me telling you, hey, girl, um, growing up, you got the uh, Easter bunny coming and you waiting on the Easter bunny when you 25 and you say, well, you know what, mama, you stop giving me uh, money, not for the Easter bunny, for the tooth fairy. You stop giving me money for the tooth fairy when I was eight and I'm 25. You owe me X amount of dollars between the eight, the ages of eight and 25. You know what I'm going to tell you? No, because baby, the Easter bunny never existed. The tooth fairy never existed, baby. That don't, I, when you thought it was real cool, but it, it didn't exist. So technically, I don't owe you shit. The fact of the matter is our land was taken in droves. Let's go get this. Um, Let's go get this video right here from a lady in the 1960s. Let me show you how our land was taken. Let's peep, watch this lady. This lady owned, I want to, I think she said 40 acres or 60 acres. Let's watch this lady right here. We'll live here. It's 11, 11 people. How many adults and how many children? Well, it's uh, seven children. I mean, and it's three. Of, well, all of most of it is grown here now. I don't, you mean this to grandchildren? And, no. It's, how many over 18 and how many under 18? Well, it's, it's uh, five over 18 and it's seven under 18. How much land goes with this house, Miss Tice? It's 60 acres. And how much? This is the 1960s in Georgia. This is Georgia 1960s. This lady has 60 acres of land. Let that sink in. 11 people staying on the doggone land. She said five over 18, the rest of them children. 60 acres of land. That's what, this is in 1960s. Let's get back into it because this is where it gets interesting. Watch. How much of it do you have planted? 40 acres. 40 acres of it. What's happening to the other 20 acres? Well, as the man that plows for us, he's taking some of it. Yeah. Mr. Payton Langford. So what she's saying is, listen how they, look how they got a juke, they're going to juke out of land. She has 60 acres of land. He said, okay, well, how much of the 60 acres is plowed? She said, 40. He, she, he said, well, what about the other 20? Oh, Mr. So-and-so plowed the other 20. He, watch the setup. Watch the setup. Pay attention. She owns 60 acres of land. They can only take care of 40. And remember, the government had just dropped the, uh, not just, but it had dropped a uh, law saying that if you have to, if you're going to get land, you have to be able to cultivate it and take care of it. If not, even to this day, they will take it from you. But watch this. What kind of crops do you have on this land? Well, we have corn and cotton, most of them. And then we have gardens, 
than we planted cucumbers this year. How much rent do you pay to Mrs. Lyndon Johnson for this house and the use of the 60 acres of land? Well, we pay one-fourth out of every bale of cotton. We pay one-fourth. One-fourth. How much would that amount to over a period of a month? Well, I really don't know. I hadn't figured it out because I'm not the one, you know, that sees that. It's my brother, you know. You pay 25% of your crop to Mrs. Johnson in rent? Yes, sir. Well, that's right. Yes, sir. What about the crops other than cotton? Do you have to give her any of that money? No, sir. No, sir. Have you ever heard of President Johnson's poverty program? Really quickly, because she wants to keep her land, listen to me and listen to me good. She has to pay the man who's plowing the other 20 and them people, she got to pay them 25% of her crops. 25% of her, cop, her crops. If she don't pay that and they stop plowing, um... The other uh, pieces of land, you're done. You're done. You know, I, I, you know what I realize. You know what I come to realize. Whoever you are is given. Um, you know what is given. A uh, disgruntled worker, because people do be stalking or whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you make another page and get you off here again, because apparently you don't have a problem with making pages, baby. You're not gonna stop no show over here. How the song go? One monkey don't stop, no show. This plane gonna keep on rolling. Oh, yeah, this thing called life gonna keep on grow. Make another page, please. Matter of fact, let me see if I can make it where you, 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 you know what I mean? <sighs> it's just too much, you know? It's giving this run worker. That's what it's giving. I ain't gonna lie. You look, you look desperate, baby. You look real bad and desperate. I ain't know you was like that, girl. That's a lot. That is a lot, fake. I think twenty minutes is the only thing I could do. All right, let's get back into the uh to the uh knowledge, y'all. Let's get back into the knowledge. So this lady, if is is gonna, she has sixty, um, right. And and you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy, Cooking Cousins? I'm so glad you said that. Let me go get this comment. You know what's crazy? It's people like that in our community, if that is one of our community. But it's people like that in our community that's the real problem. Because as long as I'm dragging and cussing out Broly and da-da-da, everybody is here for it. But the moment I try to elevate my people with some knowledge that I'm learning and try to give it to them, then it's, oh, oh, you lying, you failing our people. Girl, please. Okay? And that's an opinion. That's fine. Move on. Go around to the Pan-African. Go around to sign none of them and tell them that shit. I ain't got nothing to do with that. So look. These are one of the tactics and ways they were taking our land. Pete, watch. Watch the rest of it. So she's paying 25% of her crops to the uh the 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 uh the clear people. Peep it. No, sir. I, well, you mean the what you mean the uh it's a program the president is trying to get passed by Congress to increase, he says, the standard of living of the poor people of this country. Uh, what do you think this program might do to increase the standard of living of the people living in this house? Well, as far as I know, I think it's going to help us. That's what I mean. They was talking about Sunday. I mean, they were saying that, you know, if we could, if they can get it to pay, that it would help us. Who is talking about it Sunday? Mr. Congress and the men that is with him. The Republican congressman came to visit with you? Yes, sir. What did they talk about? Well, they asked us about our house and had they ever decided to fix the houses. And, and uh, they took pictures of the room and asked us about our heat that we use and the stoves and different things that we use in our house. And did we have water inside or outside? And then they asked us about the sanitary places that we have inside outside. So... 
And how about the answer to these questions? Well, it was no, because we don't. We don't have running water and we don't have sanitary inside. We don't have outside. And they asked about the roof and the house that didn't leak. And we told them, well, some of the rooms did. And some was all right. And he asked us, did, what do we do to prevent the water from getting on the floor? Well, he asked us that we use pans or things on the floor. Well, we told him yes sometimes. Are you now getting, or are you or any of the people who live here getting any money from the federal government through any means such as welfare? My mother is. My mother and one sister. How much does that amount to a month? Well, they get $60 a month for Social Security, and then they get $9 a month from welfare. What do you think? the president could do most in his poverty program to increase the standard of living of the people living here? Well, they could help us. For example? Well, they can give us, um, give them, at least my mother, more money in the welfare. Exactly. Ow. Miss Tice, on our way here, we stopped by the local deputy's office, and he says they have raided many stills, moonshine stills, on the Johnson okay. land. Have you ever seen All right, that's it on that. Listen to what I'm saying to you guys. Listen to what I'm saying. Um, it has been well documented that black people all across America have land that was taken from them. It is well documented. They have people to this day are still fighting for land to this day, right? So these black people work on these farms or on these, these lands and all of that stuff. The problem is a lot of the lands was taken from them. You see what I'm saying? Originally, you got to understand the clear people came here. We didn't, uh, let, let's back it up. We believe, or we have been taught that we came here. And these so-called five-dollar footlongs was here, and we came here just like the clears. So how dare we this, that, and the third? That's false. What happened? And I and listen. I can't speak for nobody. I can say my family and a lot of other people who look like me. I know that the people on this land were copper-colored people. But what I'm saying is, a lot of the land was taken from them by way of taxes, by way of upkeep. All of that stuff dropped to keep these people from keeping their land. Okay. So. Let's move on. Let's get into um Marcus Garvey. So Marcus Garvey, Marcus Jacoby Garvey, I don't know whatever y'all want to call this fool, but Marcus Garvey had a back to Africa plan. He had a back to Africa plan. That was his thing. All black people, instead of trying to fight these clear folk, let's just go back to Africa, which is fine in theory. But when you have land somewhere and you own something, you're not really, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, willing to just up and uproot your stuff. You know, that's just, that's not how that goes. So I was wondering why in the hell is he telling us to go back to Africa? And he ain't, he could have been telling the Jamaicans if that's the case, because if we believe in the story that was told, all of us allegedly come from Africa, right? They stopped off in Jamaica and Brazil and in South America and North America and woo woo Well, uh, apparently, Marcus Garvey had an agenda, much like I believe the agenda is with Dr. Umar Johnson. What happened is she, okay, so Marcus Garvey, let's get into it. Let's get, let, let's, let me, let me just show you this. Hold on. I'll show you the picture. I'll show you the photo and then we'll go from there so we can know who we talking about. Is it this one? Da, 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 da. I'll show you the photo and then we'll get into who and what we're talking about. So you guys may not be familiar with it. Some of y'all might be because y'all have been doing this too. But Henry Plecker, Henry Plecker is a clear man. He was a eugenist, just like um, Margaret Sanger. We're going to get into her, woot -woo, but he was a eugenist. He didn't believe that uh, a, a lot of people should pro procreate. He actually backed a whole lot of things for the miscegenation laws and all that stuff. It was a time. And then uh, we also have Henry, what's his name? We also have uh, Ernest Severe Cox. All right, let's start with Ernest. These, these are the people 
wait, before I do that, I got to show y'all this, this picture. These are the people right here. These are the people right here that, um, I'm going to show you right now. And, and again, everything that I'm saying is backed by receipts. So did I, oh, I don't have to go there. I could go here. I'm going to show you these pic the pictures of these people. Okay. Do you guys see this photo? You can't see me, but you can see this photo. Here is Marcus Garvey. Behind Marcus Garvey is a guy called Henry Plecker. That's his name. His name is Henry Plecker. Walter Plecker. I'm sorry. Walter Plecker. So Walter Plecker is a eugenist. Let's go get his tea. Let's go get Walter Plecker's tea, and then we're going to go from there. All right. Let me take this down. And I and I and you know what's so crazy too? I always wonder why all these black leaders always have a clear man behind them. Even Martin Luther the King, he had the unmentionables behind him in his photos on the front line. And it's because they're financed by these people. All right, let's go get it. Let me take this off. He's re he's fine. The, these these so-called leaders are financed by these people. A lot of people don't know that. And you have to ask yourself, if these people are racist and eugenists, why would they want to finance a movement for us? It just doesn't make sense, right? So here it is from Encyclopedia of Virginia. Here is the story of Walter Ashley Ashby Peck Plecker. I'm sorry. 1861 to 1947, Okay. Walter Ashby Plecker was a physician in the first Virginia State Registrar of Vital Statistics, a position he served in from 1912 to 1946. He was a staunch promoter of eugenics, a discredited movement aimed at scientifically proven white racial superiority and thereby justifying the marginalization of non-white people. Pause. Pause. Did you hear that? I'm going to repeat that one more time. He was a staunch promoter of eugenics, a discredited movement aimed at scientifically proving white racial superiority and therefore justifying the marginalizing of non-white people. Let's go back and get the picture. That's this man right here, standing behind Marcus Garvey. Automatic red flag. I'm like, what the hell? Why is he here? Like, what, what? why would they be together? Marcus Garvey is allegedly pro-black. He's allegedly the guy who wants all us to be African and pan, the first original pan-African, uh, pan-Africanist, I'm sorry. Why would a person who's a eugenics or a eugenicist who want black people to be marginalized, but marginalized be standing with Marcus Garvey? It just didn't make sense to me, right? So boom, let me take this down. Let's continue to read. So it says, um, employing, employing Virginia's act to preserve racial integrity. That's the Racial Integrity Act, 1924. Plecker effectively separated Virginia citizens into two simplified racial categories, white and colored. Now, keep in mind, remember I told y'all about the one drop, one drop rule? Remember I told y'all about the one drop rule? The one drop rule was stating to keep the clears pure. It wasn't to say who was black. It was to say, hey, you either 100% us or you ain't nothing. Okay? So he goes on to say, he goes on to say, um, where is it? Where did I stop? Oh, yeah. Racial category. Oh, white and color. The law which remained in effect till 1967 when it was overturned by the United States Supreme Court in the case of Loving versus Virginia required that a racial description of every person be recorded at birth while criminalizing marriages between white and non-white. Remember that that clear lady from Louisiana I told y'all about who said, well, my parents is on their thing that they colored. So that means, duh, no, that just means you're not 100% white. That's all that means. It doesn't mean that you're black. It just means you're not 100% white. So then it goes on to say, um, Plecker's policy used deceptive scientific evidence to deem blacks as a lesser class of human beings, but they also targeted poor whites and any one other 
or anyone he he or other eugenics considered feeble-minded asserting the virginia indians asserting that the virginia indians were in fact mixed-blooded negroes are y'all tracking are y'all tracking are you tracking here asserting that the fact asserting that the fact that they the virginia indians were mixed blooded negroes that's what they said okay so even then they understood that the so-called indians the virginia indians were in fact mixed blooded negroes why would they call them negroes let's move on Plecker also pressured state agencies into reclassifying Indians, listen, as colored. Let's run that back one more time. Plecker also pressured state agencies into reclassifying Indians as colored. The policy legacy was effectively to erase Indian as an identity and has made it difficult for Virginia Indians to gain state and federal recognition. The unmentionables are the uh, the J-dubs. I, I don't want to say their names. The juice juice, the juice juice, if, if, that, if that helps. If that helps. You guys like the video. Why is this important? We're not gonna go over the whole um we're not gonna go over the whole article because that, that could be a topic within itself. Why is this important? Because I am still confused as to why that man, why that man would be associated with Marcus Garvey. It just doesn't add up to me, right? So what I gather is, well, shit, maybe, just maybe he teamed up with Garvey because Garvey had the movement of, hey, y'all, let's just leave these clears and go on back to Africa, right? And so did the man want us not to be there either, Walter Plecker. So obviously it works. It's, it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. But then I grappled and struggled with that idea because even if we, we felt the same way, why would we team up? Why are you financing my struggle or my people's stuff to get them back to Africa? It's giving, allegedly, it's giving, it's giving agent. That's what it's giving. It's giving agent. It's given agent, but it doesn't stop there. It does not stop there. Hold on. It does not stop there. So then as I kept going and looking for other things online, I saw something else. So not only was Marcus Garvey in with this clear white man, he was also in with another clear man who shared some of the same sentiments, if not worse. Let's go get him. His name is Ernest Sevier cox let's go get him this is another article from the encyclopedia of virginia okay Did I, am i already sharing it yeah oh i'm not sorry let's go get this other clear man here we go encyclopedia of virginia these are supposed to be reputable sources okay so <sighs> Here is the guy, Ernest Severe Cox, right? Here you go. Scientist and explorer. Remember, I keep telling y'all, question everything because science is manipulated just like math, just like all of this stuff. All of it is manipulated, okay? Ernest Severe Cox uh, was a committed white supremacist who advocated on behalf of anti-miscegenation laws in, and in 1922 co-founded the, comp the compressor I'm sorry, the composer John Powell, the Anglo-Saxon Club of America, a Richmond-based nationwide organization devoted to maintaining a strict separation of races. In 1923, Cox published White America, a book that described his travels in Africa and argues that race mixing will result in a collapse of a white civilization. He also wrote extensively on eugenics. There's another person shared those same type of what you call them, right? Uh, he also wrote extensively on eugenics, 
Where did I go? Where did I go? Where did I go? Okay, and a now discredited science movement, scientific movement aimed at proving the superiority of the white race. Together with the composer Powell and Virginia State Registrar Walter Plecker, now that's Walter Boy, that's his partner. Cox played an influential role in lobbying the Virginia General Assembly to pass the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 a strict anti-miscegenation law, and later the Massenburg Bill, which banned racial mixing in all public places. In 1924, Cox formed an unlikely alliance with the black nationalist Marcus Jacoby Garvey. Based on their shared belief that the only way to save the race the races was for African Americans to relocate to Africa. Cox retired from the real estate business in 1958 and died in Richmond in 1956. Now, this is another one of Marcus Garvey's partners. You see it. Why is Marcus Garvey hanging out with these niggas? I was confused. I was like, why? This doesn't make sense. You, yeah, you want us to go back to Africa, but it's to benefit us, not to. You know what I mean? Fuck us up, allegedly. That's what I'm gathering from the movement. That would be why I would think, uh, what's his name? Dr. Umar is over here pushing a pan-African thing to our benefit, not to our detriment. But it seems like Marcus Garvey just had these clears in the back pocket. And it wasn't the right clears. and It was the wrong clears. It was the, the clears who would, if they could, snap a fingers and Thanos get us the hell up out of there. So that brings me to this. Um, do I want to go here? Let's go here. So that brings me to, I want to take y'all to UBT, UBTV. Shout out to UBTV. Very extensive research, brother. I am enjoying his channel so much. Oh my God. I am enjoying, um, my, his, his channel so, so much. It is, it is a blessing, but, um, Oh, yeah, I know, um, Danielle, I, I don't think y'all trying to go back to Africa. I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. I didn't even say Dr. Umar said go back to Africa. I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. That's what I'm talking about. So let's go get this brother's channel. Shout out to the brother. You guys, go check him out. His uh, The channel name is UB TV. He's got like a 10-part series on the boule. Inside of the boule, girl, he made my boule shit look like nothing. This, this boy is heavily researched. Do you hear me? In his video about the boule, he speaks about the origin of it, and then he goes into detail about all of the key players that basically either was in it or assisted. Freemasonry, all of that. Everything gets caught up in this. So let's get into this video really quickly. Where so-called blacks would be allowed employment, education, and the opportunity oh, to operate within a white. Let me set this up really quickly. He's going over the so-called leaders, black leaders back then, and what their agendas were, okay? dominated society without the threat of violence in this philosophy his solution was that over time with the ability to acquire trade and skills training the oppressed would build themselves up into a self-sufficient people the notable caveat being these people would basically be relinquishing any status as citizens and officially identifying themselves as unequal or second-class citizens to which W.E.B. Du Bois called a compromise. In Garvey's philosophy, segregation involved the complete displacement of so-called blacks from the continent. In comparison to Booker T's principle, the Back to Africa movement is a dramatic shift in concept. Yet overall, these two viewpoints were the segregationists Washington and Garvey's chief strategies for solving the American race problem in the early 20th century. Although Garvey was an avid supporter of Washington, their prevailing tenets were quite contrary to one another. This is a prime example of the succession of an initial concept into an antithetical position. Now, the rationale behind the standard is nearly in diametric opposition from its original concept. Did Washington's philosophy include Africa did Garvey's plan involve any passive acquiescence to whites? Yet, these strategies somehow come out of the same school of thought that on the surface may not seem so clear while opponents saw Booker Washington's platform 
as a wholesale submission to whites via the proposed allegiance to Jim Crow. Garvey's plan was the solution to that problem. Garvey asserts that America is a white man's country and the Negro will never receive justice in a white man's country. Therefore, or he should have his own land in, in his own country or, or continent, so to speak. Really quickly. So you heard the two positions, right? Booker T was like, yo, let's just stay here, bro. You know, and try to just assimilate. Garvey's position was, nah, fuck that. Fuck them clear people. They, they are so-called racist. Let's get up out of here. Go to Africa. Get our own shit. But my thing is this, Garvey, if that was the case for the benefit of black folk, why are you funded by eugenics? Two of the top eugenics of the time. Why are they the ones putting money on your books when you go to jail? Them and a, a host of other people that nobody want to talk about. Oh yes, we I mean, y'all got to get into this in, to, to this um this this series right here. It's ridiculous. So you got two opposite ends of the stick, but that's done on purpose, just like the left wing and the right wing, the Democrats and the Republican, the divide and conquer um strategy is 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 like. It's the most great, it's the best idea for a person who's trying to conquer a nation. Because if you get these people, you got, oh, really quickly, y'all, sorry, 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 sorry. You you guys, if you can, mod, can you please update my Cash App information? Um, Cash App is playing with that Cash App, so I had to create another one. My new Cash App is Cash is uh, Pisces Bit 13. Just add a 1-3 at the end of the Cash App information. I forgot to tell you that at the beginning of the video. So, so sorry. Please update that. I have to make that. I have to turn that back into a personal one again. Uh, don't send no more money to that because I don't want to get in trouble. The new one is Pisces Bitch Thirteen. But listen, mm hmm. Wait, is it is it Garvey? No, I thought he said he was related to Frederick Douglass. I thought he said Frederick Douglass. I could have sworn he said Frederick Douglass. But look. Either way, he might he might have said both of them. I don't know. I don't know. But what I'm saying is they share the same ideals. But if Garvey had that ideal and it was backed by clear supremacy, then how is Dr. Umar able to be so somewhat successful, per you know, full successful, I would say, because we still haven't seen the school. But how is um yeah they started seeing it with them boats girl child child yeah he was a scammer that's what he was he was a low life scammer who was going to get women to take care of him but that's a whole nother story but what i'm saying is it just it makes me wonder why that would be um the situation right it's in delaware that's what i heard that's what i heard okay now i want to fast forward to this part so we can move on so he goes to talking about, let me see, the timestamp should be, let's go here first. Let's go here. Let's, let's start here. Remember, we are still inside of the divide and conquer strategy. We are still inside of the, the, the place of the powers that be got one of them doing this. One of them doing the complete opposite. The people pick a side and then everybody just clash. That's why it's election time. And here we go. Everybody clashing about who they're going to vote for. Same shit, different toilet, right? Call me. Call me uppercut. Pan-African ploys to set brown eyes upon Africa had been well instituted at least a century before Du Bois and Garvey were even on the scene. But these schemes were in vain. Liberia and Sierra Leone never saw the influx the abolitionists and slave traders intended. Perhaps the Africa scheme's greatest opponent was also considered the greatest black American in history, Frederick Douglass. Quote, there is no sentiment more. Pause. This is how Frederick Douglass felt about the whole situation with Marcus Garvey. This is Frederick Douglass talking. Everybody got their shit. By no means am I saying, by no means am I saying um, that everything that Marcus Garvey did was wrong or everything that Frederick Douglass did was wrong or everything that nobody did was wrong. Because everybody have their good and their bad, their yin and their yang. 
So I don't want y'all to take that away from it. I'm just questioning Marcus Garvey's intention, given that his backing was of people that didn't want us here. That really would have liked to wipe us off of the earth. But look, why, pay attention to what Frederick Douglass says in this moment, okay? Pay attention to what he says as it pertains to Marcus Garvey and his Back to Africa movement. Or universally entertained, no more firmly held by the free people of the United States than that this is their own, their native land, and that here... Their destiny is to be wrought out, identified with the entire history of the American people, going back more than 200 years. This sentiment is natural and praiseworthy. There is not now, there has never been, and we think there will never be any general desire on the part of our people to immigrate from this land to any other, and least of all, the wilds of Africa. Did you catch that? I'm going to run it back one more time and what he said. Frederick Douglass basically saying, for lack of better terms, these folk ain't from no Africa. Why are they going there? This our land right here. Watch. Africa scheme's greatest opponent was also considered the greatest black American in history. Frederick Douglass. Quote, there is no sentiment more universally entertained, no more firmly held by the free people of the United States than that this is their own, their native land, and that here their destiny is to be wrought out, identified with the entire history of the American people, going back more than 200 years. This sentiment is natural and praiseworthy. There is not now, there has never been, and we think there will never be any general desire on the part of our people to immigrate from this land to any other, and least of all, the wilds of Africa. Really quickly, nobody was forced to go back to Africa. Everybody had a choice. The choice was made and people just didn't want to go. That, that's just the facts of the matter. You know what I'm saying? The choice was made and people didn't want to go. They could have went, um, okay, I got it, Marilyn, no problem. They could have they could have went if they wanted to. The, the 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 window of time to go that wasn't the first time they was able to able to go they've been trying to get black people back to africa um so basically what what frederick douglas was saying is uh through the colonization of the scheme thing he was re re replying to that which is related to marcus garvey and his well not his him but it is related to his movement what he's saying is there's nobody here in america no black people here in america who's from this land, who's been on this land at least 200 years, interested in going back to no goddamn Africa or going to a foreign place, especially no damn Africa. Why would we do that? That doesn't make sense. So, yes, some blacks did go back and founded Liberia and um, Sierra Leone. While the, the other part a lot, uh, that a lot of people don't tell y'all is a lot of them were unalive and enslaved. I'm not saying everybody didn't make it, but a lot of them were unalive and enslaved by the natives of those lands. I mean, you know, so yes, there was the, the back to Africa thing with the Sierra Leone and the, 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 um, the Liberia, you know, it's funny you say that too. Um, I seen a girl who was saying she from Liberia and I was looking at her and I said, she really might be, you know, Negro and her, her, you know, lineage went out there. You know what I mean? Cause she just gave me, although she was saying Africa, I just wasn't getting Africa from that. And the fact that she said that she was, you know, a native of Liberia, I was just like, her ancestors could have been one of the people who, who got on the boat. Okay. Um, Liberia, Liberia was home to the free who migrated back to Africa, and none of those people can be traced today. Hmm. There's some of the people, some, there's some of the Liberians who reparated to Africa come back to the U.S. I have no idea. 
I have no idea. I promise you, I have no idea. Now, it has been said, I can't prove this, but it has been said that a lot of them didn't make it. It has been said that a lot of them um didn't make it once they got there. It I haven't heard anybody say about any of them coming back. Hell, Frederick Douglass ain't even go to Liberia. He ain't go to Africa, but he's trying to tell everybody else to go to Africa. Make it make sense. Frederick, I mean, not Frederick. Marcus Garvey has never gone to Africa. So why is he telling everybody else to go to Africa? That, that's a that's a really good question. Marcus Garvey has never gone to Africa. Why is he asking black people in America to go to Africa? That's a good question. You mean to tell me you want to um you want to you want to you want to come up and say, "Oh, yeah, y'all, hey, hey, uh African Americans," because I know that wasn't a term back then. Yeah, it was on sale. It was on boats. They did. They, yeah, it was on boats. But I know that wasn't the term back then. You a foreigner coming over here telling us to go back to Africa. Nigga, you go to Africa. How about that? How about you get on a boat, go over there, and you stay there for a couple of years and come back and tell us how it is? But he didn't do that. But yet his agenda was to push the back to Africa movement along with the backing of some clear eugenics. And you know what's so crazy about that? There's no way you can tell me that Dr. Umar hasn't heard of any of this. I don't believe it. Maybe he hasn't. I don't know. But I just find it hard to believe that he would not have heard of any of this. Spe seeing that he speaks so highly and about his his um his his knowledge of Marcus Garvey and Frederick Douglass. These are the two people right here. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't know. Let's get into it. End quote. It is clear by this quote that even the philosophy of integration had become repackaged from the time of Frederick Douglass to the time of W.E.B. Du Bois. A cardinal theme in Hegelian philosophy is the slogan, contradictions push history forward from the earlier experiences of frederick Douglass during his life of activism contradictions were built within the central issue at the crux of his platform Douglass, similar to washington was born into slavery and also was of supposedly mixed race whose father was white and just like washington the truth about his father is unknown as most information regarding their fathers are hearsay. In comparison, both of these men's road to emancipation took two different routes. Douglas being born a couple of generations before Washington meant his experience within slavery was far more antagonistic. Washington hmm. was emancipated as a child after the proclamation. All right, now I think we're going into uh, Booker T. Conversely, that's that's be, beside the point. Douglas that's, sorry, alleged. Sorry, that's beside the point. That's a whole nother subject. But why is this important? We have been taught to go or been we have been it has been saying, hey, y'all go back to Africa, go back to Africa. It's the same thing that's happening today. Think about the whole Ghana thing. Right now, Ghana is hella, hella popular. Am I correct? How many people from blacks from America are going to Ghana? All of them. And it, they going to Ghana because of that video with that clear, that, that African man saying, I'm sorry, my brother. We, 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 my ancestor, soldier, ancestor. Let me see if I go find it. I thought I had it. Let me see if I go find it. I know it's on TikTok. What to do? Apologize. Here you go. Hold on. Yeah, here you go. And remember I told you these motherfuckers be, be reading off shit and don't really be meaning this shit? Peep this. Watch this. This how this this how this uh Ghana shit kicked back off too. Look. Brokenness to repent 
for the sins of the leaders in Africa, and in particular, the sin of sending our own brothers and sisters into slavery. This great sin brought untold pain and misery to millions of people. He's literally reading a fucking script. Remember I told you there's nothing new under the sun, right? If they've been trying to get us to go back to Africa for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, right? Mind you. And we haven't gone yet. You don't think they're going to hit that bitch again? If at first you don't succeed. Look. Of African descent and the judgment to the African people who remained on the continent. The grave sin of slavery scattered our people all over the face of the earth where they have suffered great deprivations and loss. If it were not for the part that our African kings and chiefs played in the slave trade, this evil trade could not have survived. Therefore, on behalf of all the African leaders, past and present, all of them, I acknowledge the part that we played in this tragedy, and today we ask for forgiveness. We seek forgiveness for the great pain and loss that the myopic and selfish decisions of our leaders caused our brothers and sisters of African descent around the world, and we ask their forgiveness. We plead the blood of Jesus to cleanse us all from this great sin and release us from the spiritual, mental, emotional, and economic bondage it brought. Today, we reopen the door to our brothers and sisters of African descent to return home to the continent of Africa, the land of their ancestry, and the spiritual homeland of all African people. We welcome you home with open arms as brothers and sisters hmm. and pray that we can close the door to the dark past and work towards a better future. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Look at the people in the audience looking like, what the in fuck In humidity are you and broken. Now, if it's not working with the Pan-African shit going on in America, they've now enlisted the Africans over in, uh, what is that, uh, Uganda, to go on here and say, we're very sorry, my brother. We, we, my ancestors sold your ancestors. We would like to say, we are very sorry, my brother. We want you to come back home to your motherland. Come back to your motherland, to your Africa. This is your mother... The nigga is, he reading so hard, he can't even put the paper down to show his face. He can't even put the paper, the pa he reading word for word so much so, he had to put the paper, he can't even put the paper down. Make it make sense. That's what it's giving, Miss Parker. I'm glad you put that in there. It's giving, it's, it's giving this. It's giving this, hold on. This is what it's giving to me, girl. Um, this is what it's giving to me. And to whoever this troll is, I hope you know that's not my real name, right? I know you got that off my Facebook, but you're not, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna give you the clues, child. Bye, make another page, come back again. Keep subscribing. Don't unsubscribe from the pages I'm blocking you from, okay? Please, do not, whatever you do, don't, unsubscribe from the pages I'm blocking you from. Keep subscribed to them and just make another one, okay? But this is what it's given to me. This is what it's given to me. Um, When these people keep trying to bring us back, tell us, hey, hey, y'all, y'all need to come on, go back to Africa. This is what I'm feeling like me. Now, I'm, I, if I've never felt this meme many times, I feel it now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you get your fucking hands <laughs> off me. For real, bitch. 
I ain't going to the nigga talk about, excuse me, my brother, please come back to Africa. Where you are warm and you are welcome. This me, hell no. Me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you get your fucking hands <laughs> off me. <laughs> mm mm. Fuck, I'm gonna do out in Africa. I don't know them folk. I told y'all, any one of the Pan Africans, if they can, if, if they so much so know that we're exactly where they're from from Africa, or they know at least the region, if you can prove to me that you can get off a plane. Listen to me and listen to me good. If a pan African can prove to me that he can, he or she can get off a plane and they know so much about their doggone heritage and their nationality and they and they uh who they from and what tribe and all that, when they get off the plane, it's a whole bunch of Africans standing there saying, Daddy! and they go, and You go, Sue, Sue. Daddy! Because all we got, all we got is an unverified DNA test that's telling us, oh, yeah, you from Western Africa. What? That's it? What part? Oh, Nigeria. K your ass to Nigeria and tell them people you from Nigeria if you want. See what happens. Take your ass to Nigeria and tell them folk you 70, 80% Nigeria and see what happens. I, I would love to hear it. I would love to be a fly on the wall. Matter of fact, videotape it. Videotape it, please. I would love to see the reaction of the Nigerians that they said, the test you took said that you is. Can your ass down there looking for your long lost folk. I'm confused. I, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Danielle said, I'll do it live. Danielle, have you ever been to um Africa? Just out of curiosity, have you ever been to Africa? If you can, Danielle, I'm uh no, yeah, you can communicate with them. Look, Danielle, you can communicate with them once you get your results. Once you did, once you get your results. And, and, and you, you find out who your people is. Y'all could talk. Y'all could write, um, y'all could send love letters. Y'all, y'all could, um, you know, y'all, y'all could, y'all could do all the communication y'all want. But what I'm saying is, uh, I need to see it on tape. And, and, and let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to Africa, Danielle? It's just a real question. There's no troll. And I really want to know because I find something that I have, um, that I see in common with a lot of the pan Africans people, pan Africanist people. It's just a real question. Now, before we get into that, I want to, or before we get into that, we got to move on into the Marcus Garvey movement, also along with the WEB, the boys movement. Okay. Okay, Danielle says, I got money saved to go. I've been planning to go, but I just want to see if we both going to be proved wrong. Well, I'm not going. I don't think that I have people out there, so I don't think it will prove me wrong. See, see, I'm not the one definitively saying I'm from Africa. So technically, you wouldn't prove me wrong. You actually have a better chance of proving me right than proving me wrong because I don't tie my ancestry back to Africa. The Pan-African is, I don't know if you are, but you're saying that you tie your ancestry back there. I don't. I don't. So you're going over there. You will really be, you probably have a higher chance of proving me right than proving me wrong. Reason being is because, hold on, I'm about to show you something right quick. I'm about to show you something right quick. I'm glad I had pulled this up. I'll come back to this. Do I, let me save this. I'll save it to the computer. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Because I know where this is all stemming from, right? Most of this is stemming from the ancestry, the DNA test a lot of people took. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Um, I would think so too. You know, if 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 I already was thought something 
and you know then i take a test and it basically corroborates what i thought you know confirmation bias type shit i would think so too let's go over here really quickly i need y'all to follow me camera because before you get on the plane danielle i need you to see this part okay because i'm pretty sure um i'm pretty sure you got that african stuff from school church and you probably took a dna test danielle did you take a dna test even if you haven't i want to i want you guys to see this i want you guys to see this peep game peep game this is called oh shoot this is called the limits of ancestry dna tests explained all right because see we believe we believe as americans not just black americans americans alike we believe that these folk can taste chase back our ancestry trace back our ancestry with our bodies and it is literally fucking impossible can you trace who you are related to laterally meaning people who are alive absolutely because you got your dna and the next person dna if all y'all dna go in the pool of course when you put it in the database system it's gonna say oh shit you related to so-and-so down in georgia and you from new york is of course because that's two living people with two actual dna's has anybody ever asked themselves hey girl um who y'all testing to make sure i'm from over here i know i put my spit in the tube but who are you testing over here because if they are in fact testing somebody over there then boom and you find a match then you already know who your people is. But they never tell you that. They never say, oh girl, we found you from this village and these is the, the people. Cause I'm pretty sure people taking these tests, they wanna know who they testing against. Of course they do. But what's the point in taking a test? If I got a long lost cousin in, in Liberia or Nigeria, you damn right I wanna know their name. I won't call them. I'm trying to go on FaceTime. I'm trying to get my own dashiki and go over there. She says, no, sis, I haven't, but I have a book from Family Trees that have it all labeled. It's all from the South. South Africa or South America? South Africa or South America? Let me know. Because if you got people, if you got a book from Ancestry, uh, from your family that got ties back to Africa, then you don't need the DNA test. You already know the folk. All you got to do is get on the FaceTime. You all you gotta do is get on the FaceTime. This this a good one too. Lincoln tried to resettle the soon to be free slaves as he was signing the emancipation, but they were attacked and survivors uh, to be bought wait, and, and survivors had to be bought back to America. That's what I'm saying. Good, I, that's a good point. Lincoln tried to get us back to Africa too. She says down south, but they say they say you know that's one of my slangs, girl. You be over here. You be over here, there, yeah, because you know that's my thing. I didn't say it, but they say it. That's one of my slangs, girl. They say it. I know what they said. What did Knight say? <laughs> that's what my boyfriend be telling me when I say that. Because they say he be like, I know what they say. What did Knight say? That's what he do me. You know what I'm saying? But. Of course they say it because they were indoctrinated like a lot of us to believe that we got off of a slave ship and bought here. So of course they're going to say that. So, but let me show y'all something about these DNA tests. And this is kind of off subject, but I just wanted to, I want to share this with you. And we're going to make this his own separate video. The limits of ancestry DNA tests explain 23 and me wants to sell you vacations based on your DNA, but what are they really basing that on? It says, Brian Riznick is Vox's science and health editor and is the co-creator of the Unexplainable Vox's podcast about unanswered questions in science. Previously, Brian was a reporter at Vox and National Journal. And at National Journal. Identical twins have virtually identical DNA. So you think if a set of twins both sent in a DNA sample for genetic ancestry testing, they get the exact same results, right? That makes sense. So if I got an identical twin and we have the exact same DNA, if me and my twin 
send our uh, DNA results in, it should be it should be mirroring each other. Peak. Not necessarily. According to a recent investigation by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, in fact, the journalists demonstrated that twins don't often get the same results from a single company, not one. And across the industry, estimates of where an individual's ancestors live can differ significantly from company to company. In one instance, the consumer's genetics com company 23andMe told one twin she was 13% broadly European. The other twins test meanwhile showed she had just 3% broadly European. European Ancestry had more DNA matched to other more specific regions in Europe. What's more, when the twins had their DNA test tested by five companies, each one gave different results. You get that? Each one had different results. Okay. Hold on. I seen it. Let me go get it. I seen it. Let me go get it. We got a new one. It's giving, oh, girl, you got to stop. It's weird. It's very weird. Now I'm scared. Bitch, I'm about to keep my blicky on me. You scary. But I knew it though. I should have known from the conversation. Anyway, um, so anyway, two twins taking the same test, getting different results. Getting different results. Okay. So now boom. Let's go down. I want to show you guys something. Is this it? Yeah, this should be it. Let, let me let the um, what you call them play. Watch this lady who took her DNA test. And, 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 and just peep this. She took a test with all different companies and got all different results. Peep. Is this the ad? Oh, no. It might be, not be the video. Hold on. Uh, is the video on here? I don't think the video on this one. I think it's on another uh, article that I have. But let's go into this. This is how they do it. This is how they do it. First step, you spin the tube. There are about three, million, three billion base pairs, the, the individual letter instructions of our genetic code that make up a human genome. So you spin the tube. We know we got to do that, right? Boom. After you spin the tube, then they go on. To um, second step, your DNA is compared to the DNA of other people with known ancestries. So I saw this too. When I was looking up my um, genealogy through documentation and I was going through the census. Remember, I told y'all y'all can look it up, a lot of y'all stuff through the census. When I went through the census, tell me why they was asking me to sign into the family tree portion. Right. They were telling me to sign into the family tree portion of it all. And I was like, why am I doing that? I'm just trying to look for woo de woo. So this makes sense. When they said uh, 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 each way, I'm sorry, errors aside, the genotype. No, I'm sorry. Your DNA is compared to the DNA of other people with known ancestries. They already have a cheat sheet. The fine print on DNA test says it's for entertainment purposes only. Child, please. I already, I've been saying that. I've been saying that. Yup. You, you ain't lying, fire water. You ain't lying. But you spin the tube and they compare it to people who already did the cheat sheet. They already have a cheat sheet. After that, a computer program takes a best guess at your ancestral makeup. Heavy on this part. Let me highlight it. A computer program takes a best guess at your ancestral makeup. One last step remains. The, these companies don't just match you to your ancestors. They assign you very specific percentages. So an ancestry DNA test might reveal your 23% European, 24% Chinese, and so on. This is where the computer program comes in. The algorithm says... Let's try to put ancestors together in different combinations to get a similar variation that you have. It says it looks for a best fit, not a perfect match. And it's imperfect, especially in differentiating among 
amongst ancestries that look very genetically similar. What does that mean? If you were African American, if you were African, if you were Jamaican, if you were Honduran, if you were Cuban, if it don't matter, if y'all all got the same genetic makeup, it's way harder for the dog on computer to figure it out. So how the fuck you gonna tell me I'm from Nigeria? Think about it. How you gonna tell me I'm from Nigeria? This is another one. Remember, DNA ancestry isn't the same as heritage. Here's something else that is important to remember. Ancestry DNA tests don't tell you where each member of on your family tree live. Instead, they tell you how much of their DNA you've inherited. That's for DNA tests. That's why siblings can get different reports from DNA ancestry services, even though they share the exact same relatives. It's possible that your brother might have an inherited piece of DNA from one of your ancestors that you did not. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go through one more little portion. And then we're gonna we gonna get up off of here because this is not what we're here for. Let me go back up. Um, okay, we we read that part. Recall that you inherit half of your DNA from your mom and half your DNA from your dad, but your dad may not pass on to you all the genes he inherited from, for example, Sardin Sardinian side of his family. Question. For the, uh, you are the seed of your father people. I thought they said, I didn't say it, but I thought they said you are the seed of your father. So why is it that you wouldn't get all your father shit if you're the seed of your father? It's rhetorical. But you get what I'm saying, you guys? Do you understand what I'm saying, y'all? We have been indoctrinated to believe that we are from Africa. We have been indoctrinated to believe that. We, there, there's no proof of that. We just proved that the, the last Clotilde thing wasn't real. How do we know we really from Africa? How do we know? How do we know we really from America? Well, at least through documentation, a lot of us are tracing our ancestry back two, three, four, five hundred years. Thank you, Tabitha. Thank you. But that's the point I'm making. So we have all been indoctrinated to believe something. And I get it. For the longest, I believed it too. Until I started actually looking at things, doing the research, and figuring it out for myself. And I'm like, and then talking to my family, it corroborates the shit that I'm researching. So really, it was like a no-brainer. It was literally like a no-brainer. So let's move on, you guys. I wanted to show you guys this. Let's go back to... Did I still have it up? Let's go back to Garvey and... um, What's his face? The boy. The bulls. Let me see. We got to go back here. I want to show you guys something. Is this it? Let's go here. So here is another article that I pulled up on Marcus Garvey. Before we get to him and the bowls. Um, here's another article that I pulled up on Marcus Garvey about his background, right? So he was born in 17, August 17th to 1887 in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. His father was a stone mason and his mother was a domestic servant. As a young man, Garvey traveled and worked in several Latin American countries before relocating to London, England. He studied at Burbank college university of london and worked as a messenger and handyman for the african times and the orient review a journal that emphasized pan-african nationalism right garvey was known as the founder of the universal negro improvement association it's called the unia universal negro negro improvement so association Formed in Jamaica in July 1914, the UNIA aimed to achieve black nationalism through the celebration of African history and culture. Through the UNIA, Garvey also pushed to support the Back to Africa movement 
and created the Black Star Line to act as the Black-owned passenger line that would carry patrons back and forth from Africa. He also fostered restaurants and shopping centers to encourage Black economic independence. I'm here for that. I'm here for it. The Black economics and Black independence, I am here for that. See, I agree with that. But let's go rewind a little bit. His daddy, okay, was a stonemason. Now, from what I understand about masonry so far, I'm new into masonry, but from what I'm understanding is they had the masonry that was actual jobs, and then you got like Freemasonry stuff, okay? That's the, that's the so-called secret society type shit or whatever. So I was a bit confused because I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. So there was a story, and I'm going to get into it uh, where you guys can see. George, what you say? He said, check my comments. Did I miss something? Marcus said, Marcus Garvey said, let it be done. Africa unite. Marcus Garvey was associated with Freemasonry, and his dad was a stonemason. You see how all of these people are tied to masonry? You see what I'm saying? LaDonna, thank you. She says, uh, a stonemason is a person that deals with concrete. Yes. That's why I said one is a job and one is the secret society type shit. Yes, Du Bois was in the agency too. All of them. So was Fannie Lou Hamer. Remember I told y'all, I say, I, now it's, I'm looking at her sideways because I caught in one of the videos, she was talking about how her and uh, some of the people met at the Mason Lodge. And then somebody was like, oh, Vu, she an Eastern star. And I was like, ooh, that makes sense. Don't he? No, somebody else say something. Yeah, I agree with that too. Look, somebody else say something. Look. Who, who said that it's get dad go, Lamisha? It's giving Mike Mike and his daddy. You want to know how? Let me show you. I'm about to show y'all something. It's really, it's it's definitely giving Mike Mike and his daddy. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Oh, without a doubt. Peep this. Let me show y'all something. Hold on. I'm about to show y'all something. Listen to this and you tell me what you think. Let me go get it. Because remember, I told y'all I've been binge-watching binge over on UBTV, right? This man got so many videos on the boule and it's so insightful. Oh, my God, it's so good. If y'all get a chance, go over there. I put his link in the chat, man. Y'all go over there. I want to show y'all. And shout out to the brother Steve Coakley, man. He was the one really, like, exposing all these niggas. For real, for real. Shout out to the brother Steve Coakley. Let me see if this is it. Hold on. I'm trying to get the timestamp, y'all. Hold on. Here you go. Well, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share something else too. But check this out, y'all. Shout out to UBTV. Shout out to UBTV. I want to show y'all something. This is him with his Back to Africa movement. You did say it, Medusa. I knew it was somebody who said that. I knew it was somebody who said that. I, I, I was like, whoever, and because it made. I was like, why the fuck she going to the Mason Lodge to meet and have these meetings? And then it dawned on me when you said she, her husband was a Mason and she a Mason and she was a Eastern Star. Now my 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 own wheels they turning bad, 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 like horribly bad. Yes, you did. Thank you, G Power. Thank you for the, thank you for putting me on to this brother. But now my wheels is turning stupid bad because I'm like. You was one of the only ones of that age bracket in that time that was pushing for that, for real. Why? And then you got ties to the free girl. Ooh. My eye says the color Freemasons are said to be 
uh, cl clandestine and not worldwide free and accepted Masons, especially below the Mason Dixon line. Prince Hall affiliates aren't looked up on as a, as free and accepted Masons. Yes, I'm, I'm reading about that too. The dude talk about all of this in this boule documentary, yo. It's crazy. It's crazy, yo. Let's get into it. Peep him with his back to Africa movement with his ships. Peep this, y'all. Absolute goal of federal agents in regard to their plans concerning Garvey. While Garvey knew deportation would kill his aspirations for political power. Even as the temperature rose within the organization, the UNIA was about to accomplish its greatest feat yet. In the summer of 1920, the UNIA organized a massive event entitled the First International Convention of the Negroes of the World. This brought together people from two dozen countries for a month-long congregation of festival and ostentation, culminating in one of Garvey's most influential speeches before a crowd of 25,000 at Madison Square Garden. 25,000 people. Despite the fact this convention was attended by thousands, not every so-called Negro was in support of this movement, especially the likes of W.E.B. Du Bois. Opposition wasn't just coming in from local adversaries, but abroad as well. After Zulu stepping all other potential African candidates for the position, Garvey uses his clout at the convention to declare himself the provincial president of Africa. Don't don't Dr. Umar call himself the prince of Pan-Africanism? I guess that would be in reference to Marcus Garvey being the king. But don't he call it like don't he just deem himself the, the head of the class? Didn't Marcus Garvey just do that just now? Marcus Garvey went bull guarded over them people and was like, nigga, I I had I spoke to 25,000 people. I'm in charge. That's crazy to me. This outlandish act of devotionness didn't necessarily sit well with the Native Africans, who mostly felt Garvey was dramatically overstepping his actual power and hadn't in the least communicated his intentions or respects to certain indigenous rulers of African lands. In many ways, they felt this scheme was a complete charade conceived by Garvey for the purposes of using his platform to will power in a land he was a stranger to. Mm -hmm. To hold power in a land he is a stranger to. They say it's a scheme. They say it was a scheme that Ty set up. That's what they say it. This was a scheme that Ty set up. Let me see if I can, uh, if I still have the link on my, uh, what you call him, for this uh, video. But it's, this is the brother channel right here. It's called UBTV. I just dropped the link. Y'all go check the brother out. Super dope. Super, super, super dope. Check him out. Check him out. I just dropped the link in the chat. That's the link to the channel. Don't he sound like a colonizer just saying? Didn't I tell y'all Beyonce was say, oh, over that colonizing country music? Didn't I tell y'all that? I said reverse colonization. I said it. I, I called it. That's what Marcus Garvey over there doing. Colonizing, nigga. I know them Africans was like, man, you don't get your ugly ass from over here. You're short and stout and stubby bastard. The fuck? Crazy, huh? Hold on. All of this liberation talk of Africa was all well and good. But the continent Garvey proposed to liberate wasn't his homeland, or even a place he held an ounce of influence. This transparent attempt to Zulu step the Igbo Yoruba Ashanti Triangle and flop on the British cross didn't pass the Kente bag test. If Garvey had ever made it to Africa, it would have been a spear chucker's dream. You will chuck your kata chest out, nigga. You see what, you, 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 did you catch that sub? Them folks say, this nigga ain't even from here. And you gonna come over here and try to say who the fuck you gonna be the king of? Look at the man say, if he even went to Africa, he would have been the spear chucker's dream. Look. Tucker's dream. You and chuck your cut the chest out, nigga.
Nobody fucked with Marcus Garvey. How they switched the narrative that Americans didn't fuck with him at the time that the Jamaicans didn't fuck with him, the Africans didn't fuck with him. How did we revere him? How, how did he, how we forgot all of that? And where, the, where are our grandmothers and grandfathers? I need to call my grandma. You remember you was around when Marcus got no, that probably, well, my grandma was born in like the thirties or forties or something. I don't know, but I need to know how did that get lost? Nobody fucked with Marcus Garvey. The African Americans didn't fuck with him. The Africans didn't fuck with him. Who fucked with this nigga? For real. Except the, the clear eugenics. Other than the clear eugenics, who fucked with Marcus Garvey? Is giving me agent. That's it's giving me paid sponsor. That's what it's giving. Paid agent, paid sponsor. Yeah, they got schools named after him. Listen, not only that, don't we got um oh, what's his name over there talking about? He gonna name his school to Marcus Garvey, Frederick Douglass, Woot the Woot the Woot. Like, how did we start revering this nigga when our ancestors didn't fuck with him? Oh, nothing. They did not fuck with this nigga. They. They literally did not fuck with this nigga. Thank you, Shantae. Thank you so much. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about Uma. I'm talking about uh, Marcus Garvey. How did he become a, fear head, a, a figurehead? Like, that's crazy to me. I, again, he who controls the information controls the masses. He who, he who controls the masses controls the people. He who control the people control the mind. He who control the mind control the actions. And he who control the actions control everything. Do you get what I'm saying? Crazy to me. Go. When the Black Star Line hit the high seas upon its second voyage, it was a brief escapade. Hmm. The ship broke down and was towed back to the harbor by the Coast Guard. The UNIA acquired another ship the next year. And again, the ship broke down multiple times, resulting in the death of one man killed in a boiler room mishap. To compound these issues, the ship was towed away in Panama and Garvey was met with booze and not allowed to embark on dry land at any location, including his return to America. Two failed attempts to get the Negroes to Africa and both times they couldn't make it. This nigga, this nigga is more or less on some shit like, um, this nigga is more or less on like, he, he was buying lemon boats. That's what he was buying boats that was lemon, lemons. He was buying lemon boats. Who does that? He buying boats that were lemon to take people back to Africa and they couldn't even barely make it around the corner. That's a fact. That's a good find, Lamisha. The only ship I ever seen us on. Ooh. The only ship I've ever seen us on. All the other ones were depictions. This is the only ship I've ever seen us on. Or at least the first one to me. I don't know. But Marcus Garvey was buying boats that was lemons. And them people saying, you know what? Fuck that nigga. Again, nobody fucked with this nigga, so I'm confused. Look. It was only after writing several letters to the State Department was Garvey allowed to return to America. However, when he did return, he was soon to face charges for selling stock to a ship the UNIA did not own. He was subsequently arrested for fraud. Gamble. It turns out that a group of UNIA stockholders pressed the Bureau of Investigation to scrutinize the organization's financial records for indiscretions. The nigga went to jail for scamming. But if that wasn't enough bad news, there was about to be more. Garvey's marriage to Amy Ashwood was falling apart. All right. We can move past that because we not we not on that part. I wanted to get into um hold on, let me see. Is this it? He was murdered. After he 
met with the Klan leaders and had them speak at his oh, no. rally. And even worse, Garvey had kicked out of the UNIA. Eason had even inviting the Imperial Wizard Edward Clark, his best friend and maid of honor, Amy Jacques, had become. Mark, no, look, making food. Marcus Garvey was scamming Kim. Marcus Garvey was scamming. He was trying to sell them ragged ass stocks on that lemon lime boat. He was scamming. That's why he went to jail, girl. The nigga was scamming before scamming was scamming real. For real. Audrey Love Triangle at Liberty Hall. Oh. Immediately after the spring. And he was fucking his old lady best friend, which I feel like she trashed too, but you know. Marcus moved in with Amy Jacques and famous actress Henrietta Fenton Davis, who was also a high-ranking female member of the UNIA. Fresh out on bail for fraud and with a chance of upgrading his love triangle into a polygon of sorts, possibly a trapezoid, the newly divorced and quickly remarried Montego Bay fullback began entertaining trade offers from division rivals and took a meeting with the KKK, even inviting the Imperial Wizard Edward Clark to speak at the UNIA convention. Pause. I'm sorry, y'all. My nose itching again. Look. Pause. Pause. Now peep this. Peep the whole scene. Peep this. So he get out of jail for fraud, which is what we would call scamming. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. He get out of jail for fraud or what you would call scamming. And this nigga go take a meeting with the KKK. Nigga, what? Come again, say what? You just got out of prison. And you take a meeting with the grand wizard of the kkk thank you guys thank you not only that you invite the grand wizard to come speak at your convention my nigga good question kim great question actually how does a black man get close to the head of the kkk Oh, maybe because he already had an in with the first two clear people I told y'all about, Walter Plecker, Walter Plecker and uh, Henry uh, Cox. Ooh. He maybe he made a phone call and was like, bro, hey, I'm just getting out. I'm stressed for cash, bro. Hey, hook me up with your little partner. And, and one, of them, one of them clears was like, all right, all right, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him because there's no way you're going to tell me he walked up to the meeting saying, oh, what's up, y'all? Can I talk to the Grand Wizard? No way. No way, Jose. He didn't walk up to him and say, hey, hey, guys, is it OK if I talk to the Grand Wizard? I just want to see something. Girl, fuck no. He had to get a back door. That's that's believable, Nate. They say I saw a documentary on Marcus Garvey and they stated that his first wife did most of the work and he took the credit. He was a fucking scammer. It makes sense. It literally makes all the sense in the world. How did this nigga walk up to the KKK? I'm confused. My auntie about to love your channel. Just put her on did black history. Thank you so much. How did this nigga, listen, that's what I'm trying to say, Fire um, Water. It's giving me everything. I, it's confirming what I'm already thinking. How did this short, stubby nigga walk up to the, the front door at the KKK and say, I would like to meet with your leader? And they was like, all right, hold on. Let me go get him. I hope he wasn't trying to pass. That nigga was black as night. He couldn't pass. Oh, you talking about the clear man? I don't know. 
I'm telling y'all, it's giving, it's giving what I'm thinking is real. Needless to say, these were unseasoned greens as far as the indigenous Americans were concerned. And any plantains Garvey brought to the shindig were fed to the dogs, who were now nipping at his heels as the trial began. To add insult to indigenous, Garvey had fallen out with one of his top in command, Reverend James Eason, who had been kicked out of the UNIA. Eason had traveled the country raising funds for the UNIA Black Star Line in 1919, collecting over a million dollars in funds. But rumors abounded that Garvey again had absconded on the plug. Eason discovered that none of the vessels he had collected shares for were even seaworthy. So this man Eason brought a whole bunch of shares for the boats or the vessels that Marcus Garvey had, and none of it was even see them bitches. That's why I remember he tried to take the motherfuckers on two trips and they got turned around three blocks down. Them motherfuckers weren't even seaworthy. This nigga was double scamming. He was scamming the people to get on the lemon boat. Then he was scamming the people on that, that wasn't on the lemon boat to buy stocks on the lemon boat. And the boat was a lemon and it wasn't even seaworthy. So the stocks really, girl. This nigga was a, he was, Marcus Garvey wasn't shit. According to what I'm saying, Marcus Garvey wasn't shit. You can't tell me otherwise. And I see why niggas didn't fuck with him back then. He wasn't shit. He was a common hustler. Look. And even worse, Garvey had siphoned over half the money from the collection plate, establishing the BOI narrative that the organization was essentially a huge racket. Now, Reverend James Eason had become a key witness in the prosecution case against Garvey. Mm. But before he got a chance to snitch, he was murdered. After he met with the clan leaders and had them speak at his rallies. He was viewed as an enemy of black people. For a so-called responsible black spokesman to be having anything to do with these people was viewed as a complete and utter betrayal. Pause. First of all, we're not going to skip past the fact that his partner, who he was selling the the the, uh, the stocks to, when he realized that the scam, that he was being scammed by Garvey, he was set to testify, and then boom, he get unalive. I know Marcus Garvey, big nasty ass, ain't do it. Who did it for him? What kind of protection did Brother Garvey have? To well, he he said, "Oh shit, the cover about to be blown," and all of a sudden, allegedly, he just so happened to come up unalive. Listen, it could be the KKK. It could be it could be the, the 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 eugenics brothers. The nigga is in deep. The nigga in deep. This nigga got plugs. Do you hear me? Who was behind this shit to where they felt like they had something to lose? Was it the people, the powers that be saying, "Oh shit, we can't have his cover blown yet. Let's just kill that negro to make sure this don't get blown out." Or yeah, he got options, fell, don't he? The nigga was plugged in heavy, bro. This nigga was plugged in heavy. Do you hear me? Plugged in. So my thing is, and I'm going to go back to the Prince of Pan-Africanism. You telling me you ain't know about none of this? I told y'all everything that came to pass uh, that was bad for us came through a, 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 a mixed person or a transplant. I mean, not to mention the people wasn't fucking with him. After he met with the KKK and had that man um, uh, come over there and speak, them people was like, fuck Marcus Garvey, you fat, funky, nasty, cheesy, greasy, dirty bitch. That's what the American Negroes were saying, as they should. As they should. Because I, you know what? If I was living back then and I was in, in the crowd, you listen to me and listen to me good. If I was living back then and I was in the crowd 
And that nigga would have had the Grand Wizard of the KKK come. And then we find out not only that, this nigga is a scammer. This nigga got X, Y, and Z, whoop, whoop, whoop. It would be me in the crowd. Marcus Garvey, you big, fat, funky, nasty, cheesy, greasy, dirty bitch. But I hide after I say it. But I say that part. You know what I'm saying? After I finish saying it, I dug down. But I would definitely be the one saying that. Miss Parker said that's Rolly great great grandfather. Possibly it's given they look the same. But that would definitely be me in the crowd, way in the back. What nobody can see. Marcus, your big fat funk and nasty cheesy, greasy, dirty bitch. I sure would. And then I run. But I see it. I get that off my chest. Boom. Tony. Great question. Wonderful question. He plugged in so heavy, it could be anybody, girl. He plugged in so heavy, it could be anybody. Who knows, girl? Who knows? He plugged in so motherfucking heavy, girl. It could have been George Washington, girl, or George Washington Carver, girl. We don't know who this nigga knew, girl. This nigga was a... Which nigga, boo? That nigga, there. That nigga, there. You damn right. That nigga there. Girl, let's get back into um Marcus Garvey with his dirty ass, funky bastard. Let's get into it. Let me get the uh the the the, the view right. Girl, this is this is a shame, nah. I can't believe this. And this the nigga uh Umar naming the school after? Oh, girl. This was too much. In a letter to the Attorney General, eight prominent black critics said the UNIA was composed of the most primitive and ignorant element, Negro sharks and Negro fanatics. They Arthur called Garvey for Garvey's go. deportation, but Garvey fought back. When W.E.B. Du Bois called him the most dangerous enemy of the Negro race, Garvey said Du Bois was a rabid mulatto who needed a horse whipping. I ain't gonna lie, that was a good comeback, Marcus. Marcus, that was a good comeback. When W.E.B. said he was bad for the race, um, Marcus said, shut your ugly ass up. You was a, a mulatto rabbit. <laughs> That was a good one. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. We get it. I forgot that part. He need a horse whipping too. That part, that was a good part. I ain't gonna lie. I gotta give him that. I, gotta, I don't like him, but I gotta give him the props when he get him. You know what I'm saying? Girl. A. Philip Randolph, who had once befriended Garvey, called the UNIA leader a half-wit, low-grade moron. Everybody be in the midst of that, that, A. Philip Randolph received a package in the mail. And thinking it was a bomb, he called the police. They opened it up and they found that it was the severed human hand of a white man, signed with an, a note signed by the KKK. Randolph believed that it was really the Garvey movement that had sent it. It would make sense. Don't he got a plug at the KKK? The nigga cool with the Grand Wizard. You get a, a box to your front door and it's a clear hand. Oh, yeah, Gigi, they was beeping crazy, wasn't they? See, see, this the thing, Gigi. We be talking about the churn these days, and they do do too much. They do. I ain't gonna lie. They do the most. But them niggas was beeping heavy back there, too, girl. Them people was beeping like crazy back there. Now, my question is, who he, who he got to get the, a white, a clear hand in the mail? This nigga was heavy. Do you hear me? This was a heavy nigga. This was a heavy nigga. I don't care what Marcus Garvey might have wasn't shit. I'll give you that. But he was a heavy nigga. This was a heavy ass nigga. I said what I said. I said what I said. Oh, y'all going back and forth. Now you're offending me because you're speaking bad on this man who actually doing something for black people. I have to be sucking on his peen. Oh my God. Listen, you guys. Let's be nice in the chat. Um, but I ain't gonna lie, you gotta be strong now. What's her name? Uh 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 what's the girl name who I just pulled up here? 
Danielle, I think you got to be strong at the dollhouse, baby. You got to be strong. We drags over here. We drag everybody fades. You know what I'm saying? So I know you got a fade. If you real sensitive about it, fade, you might not want to come in here because I drag you. You going to be mad at me. Because I just called Marcus Garvey a big, fat, funky, nasty, cheesy, greasy, dirty bitch. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be strong at the dog. Uh, welcome. I'm glad you're here, but you just got to be a little more stronger. That's all. I just want you to eat your weedies, baby, before you come over here. Um, I just want you to be just a little more stronger. I like you. You've been co communicating in the chat. I love it. I'm here for it. Just, just add a little bit more um weedies to your to your to your diet before you come to the dollhouse on educational friday because we trying to dispel all the bullshit you feel what i'm saying we trying to go back and realize the people we thought we revered were ain't shit niggas okay that's the job over here okay so you know danielle just be a little stronger I, i'm glad to have you you know you guys be nice to the people in the chat, guys, be nice. But you know, they yell, you gotta, you can't, you can't get triggered. You can't get triggered. This ain't this place over here. It's like, it's like, girl, they'll, they'll make you jump off the bridge. We don't want you to do that. Now let's get back into it. Cause Marcus Garvey had the plug now. Garvey, now frequently accompanied by eight bodyguards, denied involvement and said he was the target of violence. Now you know he a lying ass nigga. But then Reverend James Eason. Once Garvey's handpicked second in command, and now expected to be a key prosecution witness, was shot and killed. Before he died, Eason identified his assailants as Garveyites. As Garvey's trial began on May 18, 1923, a police bomb squad stood on alert and UNIA members packed the courtroom. On the first day of the trial, Garvey fired his attorney and announced that he would defend himself. Oh, girl. I think Garvey believed that his powers of rhetoric and oratory would ultimately sway the court in his favor. He would have ruled the court, in other words, by his superior mm -hmm oratorical gifts. And I think Garvey came in the end to rue that decision because it was a disaster. It's given narcissists. Garvey paced up and down before the jury box as a parade of former UNIA officials took the stand to testify against him. Defiant, Garvey blamed subordinates and evaded responsibility for his errors. He sound like a nigga today. He also took a lot of time badgering witnesses, <laughs> alienating, I think, in the process. A lot of jurors uh, by his courtroom manner. He seemed to be intimidating of witnesses, even his own witnesses. Girl? It was not a, not a good performance by Garvey. Girl, Marcus would say, fuck it. If I'm going down, nigga, everybody going down with me. Fuck all that. I already know I'm not going to beat this shit. Fuck it. You fired, lawyer. I ain't paying you shit. You fired. Fuck all that shit. I'm about to come through this bitch. I'm going off on everybody, even the people on my side. I don't give a fuck about none of this ugly ass shit. Jurors, I don't fuck with y'all neither. Bitch, I'm about to go down anyway. Fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? I might as well get my little one, two, yin, yin, yin in before they come send me on home. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what it's giving to me. That's what it's giving to me. Garvey was like, man, I ain't gonna beat this shit. Fuck that. I don't need you, lawyer. Go home. Then after that, he said, everybody going down. Bitch, anybody could get it. The judge, the juror, nigga, Jesus, the white one or the black one. I don't give a damn. All you niggas. It's giving New Jack City, ain't it? That nigga said, everybody going down. This nigga cutting up on his own witnesses. Nigga, I'm a, if I'd have been a witness, I'd be like, nigga, I'm on your side, duck, duck, goose. Why you want up on me, stupid? You know, I say, you know what? Fuck all that. Yeah, he did that shit. Yup. That nigga was scamming. The nigga knew them boats was broke. Matter of fact, he got them from a junkyard. And I told him the the uh the the shut the the, the uh, engine don't work on them bitches. And he said, fuck all that. We just gonna put a fan on the bottom. I I'd have been ratting. Oh hell yeah. And nigga, you wanna try to play with me on the stand, my nigga? You got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. Hell no. Hell no. Hell, hell, hell no. Nigga, you got me fucked up. No. 
But I guess you know when your back is against the wall, and um, you know, you know you're going down. They say something taking place called fight or flight, and they say this how it be happening when you do the fight or flight. Look. That's what it's giving. That's what it's giving. Let me run it back. This is what he said. This is what Nino Brown came in that bitch and said. He said, man, fuck all that ugly ass shit. Y'all niggas, y'all niggas in here playing. Y'all niggas think this shit a game. Fuck all that. You heard it. You heard it. Marcus said, man, y'all on that bullshit, man. Y'all playing. This is my life, nigga. I'm fighting for my life, nigga. The fuck? Girl, let's get back into it. Closing statement, Darby's voice carried clear through the corridors and out to the street. I want no mercy, only justice, justice, justice. I would not betray my struggling race. If I did, I should be thrown into the nethermost parts of hell. After a four-week trial, his three co-defendants were acquitted, but Garvey was convicted and given the maximum sentence of five years in prison. Hoover's agents had the UNIA under surveillance for years in search of damaging evidence. But in the end, Garvey's conviction hung on using the mails to defraud one man, Benny Dancy, of $25. Hold up. Wait a minute. My girl said, I'm ashamed to say I live 10 to 15 minutes away from Umar's school, sham of a school that's currently housing crackheads and rodents. Girl, I know you lying to me. I know you lying. For real, Lily? They squatting in the school? I thought it was finished. All they had to do was paint. How they get in? He didn't put no burglar bars up. Dr. Umar's starting to show me why he naming the school after Marcus Garvey. It's given that might be his long lost uncle. You feel what I'm saying? That's what it's given to me. You guys be nice to each other in the chat. Girl, Lily, I'm so sorry, girl. I'm so sorry. I know, right? <laughs> you like me. <laughs> Who that was saying, take a picture, Lily. That's how I am. I mess it like that, girl. Take a picture and send a video and send it to me on my own voodoo doll podcast at gmail.com. Send me the video, girl. <laughs> girl, no, they gonna be they done been got in that bitch. Oh, that's cold. Girl, it, now I see why he named it after Marcus Garvey. I see it now, girl. He took no advice. He did not heed advice. He felt that anything contrary to his view of things was an attempt to derail him or to deflect him from his goals. He had uh, just an overweening confidence in his own ability in areas where he had no expertise, such as in the case of ships, in the case of uh, trying a legal case um in his investment priorities he he just would not take advice the clear people in february 1925 after nearly two years of appeals marcus garvey was escorted to the atlanta federal penitentiary as prisoner number 19359 catch the scene Guess this tea coming up. His only personal assets were $40 and a few hundred shares of his own worthless stock. UNIA members believed their leader had been railroaded. To dampen their frustration, Garvey wrote a song. This nigga wrote a song. No this nigga said, hey, y'all, I know y'all waiting on me, y'all scared. 
Y'all don't know what's going on. So let me write y'all a little ballad right quick. And wrote a song called Keep Cool. And you know what? I keep telling y'all, the only thing you can guarantee a nigga to do is nigga. Niggas gonna always nigga. Nigga, what the fuck you mean? Fuck this song, nigga. We fucked up over here. We don't know what's going on. The protection and left. You locked up, nigga. We don't know if the KKK gonna come burn this bitch down. You know what I'm saying? This nigga made a whole album. It sent it to the people like, oh, don't worry about it, bro. You cool. Keep cool, bro. Don't trip. You know what I'm saying? This little setback for a little minor comeback. You know, the minor setback for a major comeback type shit. You know what I'm saying? Just chill. Nigga, we scared. Are you crazy? What you mean? Talking about keep cool. See, you see why I would have been saying your big fat folk and nasty keys and grease. You see what I'm saying? Girl, Marcus Garvey played in them people's face. So y'all see, when y'all thought that the day, the niggas of today, the only, the first ones making albums behind bars, you're a lie. Look, you, you see it. Now you see, they wasn't the only ones making the album behind um, closed doors. I mean, behind bars, baby. Everybody was recording behind closed doors and behind the bars. Look at, peep the, um, and he got a little nice little pin game with him too. Shout out to the brother Marcus. Peep this out. Song. Let no trouble worry you. Keep cool, keep cool. Don't get hot like some good I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. See, if I was stressed out, I'd have been like, fuck that shit. I'd have probably threw the, um, whatever record player they had back then. I'd have probably threw that bitch in the wall. But, you know, now that, you know, hindsight type shit, it wasn't that bad. Yes, my aunt, he made an album in prison. Prison. Girl, Marcus Garvey, you wasn't shit, my nigga. This nigga really played in them people's face after he cursed everybody out at the courthouse. Then he gonna make an album, bitch. This nigga dropped the album. Girl, you can't make this shit up. Marcus Garvey wasn't shit. Girl. On this episode of The Black and the Records, I want to go Marcus past is this. locked up. Because he, he, he won't he let him. do women problems, too. He's screwing his wife, his old lady best friend. He's screwing everybody, girl. Anybody with a cooch, he's screwing. But I wanted to get you this part. Look, guess who's going to be putting money on his books? People going to be putting money on his books, bitch. Look who's going to be putting money on his books. Look. Business as a proxy between Marcus and the organization. He but she wasn't his only visitor. Noted white supremacist mm -hmm. Ernest Sevier Cox and co-founder of the Anglo-Saxon Club of America. Didn't we just learn about him? The clear man who worked closely with Garvey, the eugenics dude, not Walter Plecker, the other one. Oh, came to see him regularly, baby. Oh, yes. He had to check on his investments. Let's get into it. America met with Garvey several times. In fact, they had already been good friends. Not only was Cox a famous white supremacist, but he was also in full support of Garvey's Back to Africa scheme. Of course. This is the point their paths crossed. None the matter that Cox believed the color races to be inferior while also being in course with top eugenicists like John Powell. Garvey had collaborators in his vision of African migration. And more importantly, the favor of high profile white men. For the duration of his time in the Atlanta pen, Garvey received several hundred dollars per month, according to his prison records. Several hundred dollars a month in the 19, what this is, 20s, 30s, 20s, 30s of even, you know how much money that is today? That's like nigga, that's like nigga in jail right now and they getting thousands of dollars a week in jail. Nigga, who's sending you that type of money? How the fuck you getting that money in jail? Yes, they were sending him several hundred. That's more than two. Several hundred dollars a week while this nigga was in prison. I know that nigga ain't eat and Zuzu or Wham Wham the whole time. That nigga was ordering steaks. That nigga was paying for the guards. That nigga had the guards going out getting steaks and potatoes and bringing it back to the prison, girl. Girl, let me tell y'all something. It wouldn't surprise me none if Garvey was paying them fucking guards to let him go stay at a hotel at night. Pete, no, several hundred dollars going to prison. Look.
most visitors only left a few cents or as much as a couple of dollars. However, a deeper analysis of his prison records exposed the evidence that Garvey was being wired significantly larger sums of money on a regular basis from a secret source. To which he used these sums of money to order himself special gifts mm. from preeminent department stores like Macy's, mm. much to the chagrin of the prison workers. Garvey's time in prison stalled any progress the UNIA hoped to make, not to mention his new white romance with the likes of Ernest Cox, called the side eye from his peaks back in Harlem. One of those prognosticating peeps was quite possibly the blackest man in the movie, Timmy Tom Fortune. This nigga was getting hundreds of dollars a week and was shopping at Macy's. Bitch, they didn't have online shopping. I'm confused. Get me up here. I, I have a question. You know, today's society, when you go to prison, you get an iPad. So maybe you was able to order something. But... He was shopping at Macy's, which was high end back then, in prison. How you was getting the clothes, bro? How was you getting the clothes, bro? I'm, I'm just trying to see something. How was you getting the clothes, bro? From your bromance? You know, niggas care more about the image then what's really going on? Marcus Garvey said, bitch, if I'm going to sit in this bitch, I'm going to sit. You feel me? I'm going I'm to be the, the best dressed nigga around this bitch. You feel me? Girl, he probably had everybody. He probably had gangs covering for him and everything. The nigga had money. He didn't get touched in prison because he was the nigga with the money. Girl, ain't no way. This is insanitary. What is happening? Yeah, I think he was trafficking in there, too. You think he was selling drugs, girl? Oh, he definitely... Listen, the guard, there, there's no way he'd get that type of money. He definitely paid the guards. That's not even a question. The guards got greased. They greased the guards. That's not a question. My question is, number one, this is anonymous, so that means they was greasing the doggone prison people and everybody, too. Who is sending this nigga money, and how is he can his ass down to Macy's to buy these clothes? question who's sending this nigga the money and how yeah who paid for the studio time for keep cool how is he getting the clothes right it's this is insanitary it's insanitary at this point i don't know what the hell going on who bought this who went down the mazes and got the clothes for this nigga and bought it back to the uh to the thing because when from what i know in today's society you can't just go and be like oh i bought some outfits for my old man in prison and the, and the prison people be like all right yeah give it to me bitch so you mean to tell me if my man go to prison i can go get him louis vuitton slippers and louis vuitton robes and drop it off on the weekend and be like, hey, babe, oh, hey, this for my man. Girl, what? For real? Somebody lying, bitch. Somebody lying. There's no way. There's no way in saying, girl, listen, there's no way. There's no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Do you hear me? Let me see. I wanted to show y'all one more part, and then we're going to have to come back for part two. For his release. Relating to President Coolidge, that Garvey's release would be a priceless gift to the Negro, causing his name to be honored by generations yet unborn. Girl. That's what he said now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Malcolm Daddy and his mama. You know, Malcolm Daddy was a Garveyite. He wrote on behalf of Garvey to get, get out of prison. Okay? He wrote on behalf of uh, Marcus uh, to get out of prison. That is Malcolm X's mom and his daddy. 
he was a Garveyite. Malcolm even spoke about his daddy being a Garveyite. So it's not, you know what I mean? It's not um, it's not unpopular, or unheard of. Everybody knew that. But I want to see something. I'm trying to see something. We're gonna have to go through this again, girl. Hold on. Is this the part? No, that's him with the he got baby mama drama. He got women problems. He got women right. We don't go through all this, but I just want to go to one particular part. I want to go to one particular part about this masonry shit. Hold on. Is it here? So the practice of uprooting indigenous Americans from the mainland and transporting them into the Caribbean to later be sold from the Caribbean was well ingrained in colonial policy. We gonna come back to that. Hold on. I want to, I want to share one thing. If, if it's not on this one, it's definitely on the next one. I want to share one thing. That made me feel like the daddy basically bred Marcus to be a, um, a Mason or to be what he is or be affiliated the way he is. I want to see something. Hold on. Is this, let me see. Is it up here? The ship carrying 400 passengers left Plymouth after some inclement weather that culminated mm -mm. in the death of dozens and the dismissal or abandonment by dozens more. Hold on. The Garvey legend held within itself. Okay, it may be on the next one. Hold on, you guys. I want to show y'all something, because this one made me be like... This one made me be like... The daddy was in, you know, like breeding him like, like Mike Mike Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like Mike, Mike, Daddy was um grooming him. Oh, it's on part three. I want to show y'all something. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let this add, please. I want to show you. I want to show y'all something that happened to Marcus when he was a young boy. Real place of Johnny Bruce. Take of it what you must. Hold on. But these Prince Hall free. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to show y'all something that he went through as a child with his daddy. I was fed up with... Sorry. I want to show y'all something, and then we're going to end it on that. We'll come back next week for part two, because this is a lot. This is a lot of tea. Oh. Shanti Descent was a fanatic of all things British, wrote glowingly. Of Jamaica's okay, no. colonial savior. It is for to inform you that the Universal Negro Women Association is an organization that. I like his little young and the restless name. I could let y'all see, because I'm just trying to see. And even one. oppose British occupation, do they cleverly or deceptively solicited support? From some of the top elites in London by publishing their private okay, letters. This is um, his paper. Their popularity amongst his aristocratic lady fellow travelers and playfully. Oh, yeah, he was with a white woman after too. After getting a taste of the free man's desk. And the teenager was all but putty in his hands. He was with a white woman too. After Here learning was. about Marcus and their age difference, Amy's mother was suspicious about the intentions of a grown man. Nope, with her daughter, who at the time was holding, I'm gonna have to find the time stamp, y'all. Oh, that's going to hard, though. The curly and the patak, one of the central planks of the UNIA Book of Laws, providing death in a prevailing climate of. As his popularity rose, the bureau. Garvey's father was a Here mason, goes. a professional mason. Pause. This the part. This the part. Listen to me. And I finally found it. I'm sorry, y'all. This is so unprofessional. But look. Look, 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 look. Pete. So this is the part where it is told a story about his daddy. If anybody know anything about these secret societies uh, that the Negroes uh, try to emulate or join, there's a lot of um, evil things surrounding crossing these, these things, right? So watch what Marcus Garvey dad does to him when he was a little boy. Look, 
And this is why I say, you know, they say he was a stonemason, but now I'm figuring out either he was recruited and say, hey, yo, baby, we gonna make him X, Y, and Z. Because how does nigga get these plugs still? I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like, peep it out, though. And among the things that he did was to uh, create tombs for people in the St. Anne's Bay graveyard. He took Garvey with him to the graveyard one day. And they were digging this grave and his father had Garvey go down inside the grave, but then he pulled the ladder up and left the child in the bottom of the grave. Before we move on, his daddy took him out to help dig graves. When he went down in the grave, he pulled the ladder up, right? Now, peep what this says. Most of the speculation or most of, most of the speculative lore about the skull and bones ritual has centered on its death fixation beyond the obvious skull and bone and crossbone insignia. Of course, the most persistent story is that the initiates spend their senior year in the basement crypt of the bones tomb, taking turns lying in a coffin in a too long, intense psychodrama and autobiographical session in said coffins recount their personal and sexual history of the other 14 chosen to the other 14 uh, chosen ones the better to bond for life with those they know best and prepare for their destiny and stewards of the ruling class listen they have this, the skull and bones. Remember, I was telling you all that when we was talking about Boule. They have this fixation on death. Why would his daddy, if his daddy wasn't in Freemasonry, why in the fuck would he have his son go down into a grave and then pull the ladder up and leave him there? Sound like a ritual to me too, Sheila. Sound like a ritual to me. Sound like a ritual to me. But they want us to believe that they had, he, his daddy ain't had nothing to do with the Freemasons? No way. No way. No way. It's giving ritual to me. It's giving ritual to me. Girl, peep. Catch, catch. Garvey said that he cried out and his father wouldn't let him get back up out of the grave. He wanted to teach him a lesson. Alone in the grave, young Marcus Garvey learned that he could rely on no one but himself. It was a lesson he would carry for the rest of his life. Girl! Remember I told y'all. Oh, you, oh, just saying, say he was like six, I think. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me none. They breed these people. You don't get just walk into these these places. Select you. You are chosen. So it wouldn't surprise me none if the even as, let's say the daddy wasn't into Freemasonry. Let's say he wasn't. And he was just a stonemason, right? He just did the 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 cement and all of that stuff. My thing is, is it possible that? They could have pulled his daddy aside and been like, hey, he one of the chosen ones. We need you to do woo woo de woo Yes, it's possible. Is it probable? No. If you ask me, this is just my opinion, all of them niggas was in on it. Just like Mike Mike, Martin Luther the King. His daddy was Freemason. All And they choose, they, they raise these, they breed children just for this. Just for this. This is no cap. They are raising children. They breed, not raising, they're breeding them. They're getting pregnant just to do what? And let me also say this. My first thing that I told you guys was all of the people that they put in control of the so-called Negro community. Let me start. Let me back it up. They teach us all that all black people are the same. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But what they do is when they teach us that, they're able to slip in a lot of transplants and a lot of half and halves and a lot of whoop-de-whoop -whoop to misguide us. Hence, Barack Obama. We all thought he was just straight up nigga. Whole time, he ain't nigga at all. He a Nigerian in the clear. And it took for him to not do nothing for us to see. Why is this important? Obama, in my opinion, allegedly was bred to be the fucking president. 
40 years to the day, Robert F. Kennedy said, if blacks do a good job, you'll have a black president in 40 years. 40 years to the year, not the day. 40 years to the year, boom. Here come Barack Hussein Obama. Or Barry, if you want to call him by his real name and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? These people are bred into this shit. There's no way this nigga done come up out of Jamaica, broke, busted, and disgusted, and get these type of connections. I don't believe it. And now my question is, oh, Dr. Umar, what you got going on, bro? We'll discuss part two. We'll discuss the second half. And we're going to do more than him the, uh, next week. Next week, we're going to do him and we're going to get W.E.B. up out of here, too. We got to get W.E.B. the boys up out of here, too, because he wasn't shit. It was it, how they say the lesser two evils. That's what you was dealing with. OK. It was it was, you know what I mean? Girl, it's a shame, girl. I can't believe this. This is a shame. Oh, my God. Hold on, y'all. Really quickly. Hold on. This is a shame, y'all. What y'all think? What y'all think? What do you guys think about this? My, Like I said at first, my suspicion was something ain't right about this Marcus Garvey thing. Because what made me want to go down the rabbit hole was, why in the fuck is this doggone Jamaican coming over here fucking with us? Tell them, let's go back to Africa, nigga. Tell them niggas over in Jamaica eating patois, patois and all of that shit, speaking patois. Tell them to go down to motherfucking Africa. Why are you coming over here? Then to find out the nigga wasn't even really here like that. Girl... Somebody lying. Somebody lying. And I don't like it. What this card is? Hold on, y'all. Oh. You guys, y'all, y'all have been nothing short of amazing. Thank you guys for coming in. Shout out to everybody um, for pulling up to the dollhouse. If you haven't already, y'all, like the video, please. Thank you, Rochelle. You sent me a cash app to my other cash app. Um, free pop of the, Who is that? Girl, here we go. We got another one while I wasn't looking. What happened? Garvey never went to Africa. I know. They using Africa as a read. I'm confused. I don't see nothing. I know Garvey never uh, went to Africa. Africa. I, it's giving Garvey as a plant. And now I'm over here wondering, is what's his name a plant too? The Prince of Pan-Africanism? The Prince of Pan-Africanism? We'll get into it next week, uh, W-E-B, and we'll finish off Marcus Garvey, you guys. I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you to everybody who uh, supported me through Cash App. You guys, um... Why he ain't never go? Because why he had to, girl? He, he was like, I'm about to finesse these niggas. He said, I'm about to finesse these niggas. Did say that. He said, I'm about, I ain't got to go no motherfucking way. I'm going to just say that shit. And them niggas going to follow him. And it is what it is. Girl, anyways, let me get off of here, y'all. Let me um get off of here. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming in. Thank y'all for coming in. Thank y'all for coming in. We're going to get more into why I believe Marcus Garvey not only was a plant, but he was one of the one of the main catalysts or one of the reasons why we we he was the black, he was the demise of, of, of the downfall of the black people. And I'm and I said that. Even though most of us didn't take the bait, his rhetoric was the demise of black people because he's the reason Dr. Umar exists, okay? So we'll get into more of this uh, next week. But I love you guys. We'll get together uh, tomorrow sometime and Joe's on something. I don't know yet. Uh, let's get up out of here. Y'all know how I am. If you're new to the channel, welcome in. If you're um, a returning dollar dime, welcome back. And I'm going to Joe's y'all up out of here, girl, so I can get off of here. 
give me something to drink. My nose starting to act up. It's swelling up, girl. I'm I'm itching and inside making me all gone, you know, sneeze and all of that. It's just too much. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. And I'm going to Joe y'all up out of here. Peace. Bye, y'all. Check one two one two. We live, baby. Come, come, come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy Big Chew, the voice of the beat. You know what I won't blaze up. Come on, blaze up. It's a beat for me. Wah 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 wah